myself. Now we all love a good snoop around, don't we? Particularly in those areas of things like upstairs, downstairs, Downton Abbey. I don't know about you, I can never decide whether I should be upstairs or downstairs. What do you mean you're more of a ruby, Neil? I know what you're saying, but you know, Mr. Hudson, Rose, Mrs. Bridges, and for all those, of course, who watch Downton Abbey, a brand new set of characters. Now here, Behind me is the brilliant and gorgeous Crown Hotel, a turn of the century, 19th century uh, hotel that was really started simply because people came here to Harrogate for the spa waters. They believed in their medicinal purposes and how much it was going to make them feel a lot better. Hence the rise of all these beautiful grand hotels. The Crown is no different, let me tell you. So as we go through the doors, we're going through the doors of major people who have gone before us. The former British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, the celebrated writer Agatha Christie, and so many more. So let's flick back the doors of the beautiful Crown Hotel Harrogate and find out exactly what's gone before us. So this is the beautiful Crown Hotel in Harrogate. Now there's been a hotel here since 1600, absolutely. And then it was really renovated over that particular period. But it was in the 18th century that it truly took off. This was because in 1847, they thought that royalty would be uh, coming here to Harrogate to take to the spa waters. Apparently they were so good for you, even royals now wanted to come interested about this particular era really is this as you can see Queen Victoria really put her stamp over everything simply because you know people really she was like a major celebrity as you can imagine and a visit from a royal at that particular period well was seen as the creme de la creme if she was willing to take the spa waters or any senior royal of the British monarchy at that time well if it was good enough for them it was simply good enough for normal people like you and I that's how hotels like this really sprung up and came into their own. If you stayed in the very same hotel that a royal had stayed in, first of all, you were incredibly well off, and then you were almost a celebrity yourself. And this, the Crown, along with many others here in the very heart of Harrogate, really became something of a, well, number one destination, putting North Yorkshire, quite simply, on the map. And as a rival to nearby medieval, York. Now 1912 was a very big year here at the Crown Hotel. It was the year that Sir Edward Elgar visited amongst his many first visits and I don't know if you know this, there's also as you can see a room named after him but he was the person really that embraced the new gramophone era. He was if you like the digital king of that particular era. He used to walk in Valley Gardens directly across from the hotel and would sit outside. People recognised him. Now, of course, it's not a selfie period, is it? So people simply couldn't get a picture, but they requested that he signed many of his gramophone records. What was wonderful about this was then, because he'd visited again, as I say, he was the superstar of the classical world. People absolutely adored his music. He was, if you like, the number one of the charts of that era. And because of that, and because of the association here, the hotel liked to have him sit in, in and around, literally in the restaurant area, bar area, and of course just talking to many guests. Many people came away having stayed here at the Crown saying they'd enjoyed a wonderful conversation with Sir Edward all about his forthcoming music and his latest releases. As I say, he was the king of the gramophone era, but like everything, it moves on very quickly. Now the great man behind me here truly needs no introduction. It's one of our greatest ever British Prime Ministers, Sir Winston Churchill, a favourite of the late monarch, Her Majesty the Queen, Queen Elizabeth II. And here in the Crown Hotel, he has the honour of the main restaurant being named after him. But why? Well, quite simply, he came to Harrogate on a number of occasions, particularly as the dark clouds and, uh, you know, sort of gathered storms started in 1939. Harrogate played a very big part in the Second World War, and the Crown is now part of that particular history. So Winston, yes, was so, so well known, of course, that there's a very famous store in the town, the Jurors, called Ogden's. And Ogden's has been there for many, many years. He was so thrilled to receive from them a personalised cigar box. 
as you can see from the plaque here. You see, wherever you go in, in this wonderful country of ours, the United Kingdom, Winston Churchill looms large. And here at the Crown, he loomed even larger, particularly during that very dark period. One of our most celebrated writers, performers, raconteurs, none other than the brilliant Alan Bennett, actually made a programme inside here at the Crown. It was very clever, you see, because he sat in the main lounge taking afternoon tea in a very high chair. And not a lot of people noticed that he was there. He was secretly filmed, as he said, earwigging, eavesdropping listening in, whatever you want to call it. He made notes, of course, about all those genteel ladies who took afternoon tea, discussing their problems, their secret meetings, their business dealings. It was a fascinating sort of insight into the hotel world. Now, when I first came across the Crown Hotel in Harrogate, at that point it was owned by Trust House Forty, Lord Forty, who was a very good close friend of our late and beautiful monarch, Her Majesty the Queen. And as I told you recently, I was lucky enough to bump into his son, Sir Rocco Forty. And what's wonderful about these particular meetings years later is you realize, of course, that these were magnets, you know, huge, huge global people. And suddenly you meet on an equal level. I couldn't quite believe it when I first came here to the Crown in Harrogate. It seemed so special, so exclusive, and of course, completely reeking of money. Alan Bennett, of course, turned this into a wonderful sort of drama all about people who just took tea, had the time, had the money, and indeed the inclination to sit back and partake in one of England's foremost pleasures, simply afternoon tea. Now, while this beautiful hotel is now back to doing what it does best, welcoming many guests from around the world, including many from Australia, Canada, the United States, so many other wonderful countries, South Africa, Bali, the Netherlands, everybody, it appears, wants to come and sample at the delights of Harrogate. As I say, it was the spa waters that really took this particular place off. People truly believed, and I, you know, I would be a little bit debatable now as to how well it, they were supposed to make you feel. It was almost a little bit like the Edwardian era for the seaside town that really was put together by Prince Edward. You know, once he'd taken a dip in the sea, everybody thought, well, you know, he looks good, he feels better, let's all do the same. Some of the sulphur waters, let's just leave it there, you know, they're a taste acquired to say the least. Back though to the Crown, in 1939 the government decided that they wanted to use this for government use and this went right through until 1958, hence the reason, as I told you earlier, that Sir Winston used to visit. It was used for all sorts of things regarding the war. Now, as one can imagine, the where it was placed here in the very heart of North Yorkshire, it was vital as a good operational unit. Harrogate, like everywhere, had its fair share of bombs. But the bottom line is, Harrogate's the Crown had an important part to play in Britain's fight against Germany during the Second World War. Today, as you can see, it's back to its thriving best, and it really is like stepping into another world. One of the things that I did find fascinating was, and I don't know if you know this, but if you arrived at the Crown during the 18th century, while your master and mistress would have been dropped off at the front door, your cab, the one that you were driving, the handsome cab or the carriage, would have to go round the back and unpack in all bad weathers. It was only for the rich, where of course they were looked after so beautifully, so well. Now you might say, of course, being a servant in the 18th and 19th century wasn't such a bad thing. After all, they got to stay in the very same places as their master and mistresses. 
normally in the tiny rooms at the very top of the hotel. And remember, although they were on holiday here, they were still very busy serving their mistress and master throughout. So whatever they wanted to do, whether that be go for a, a walk or a, you know, a gun shoot or something like that, or meet people in the park, they had to tootle along, normally with all the picnic paraphernalia. So if you are a fan of that sort of particular era, and let's face it, we're all secret Downton Abbey fans, are we not? This really is a place that's steeped in history. And as you walk along the corridors and look at all those beautiful rooms, you really can get a sense of what it must have been like living in Victorian and Edwardian England. And right now in the 21st century, it's as elegant as ever. Neil Sean, Harrogate, The Crown Hotel.